Hey Floss Tube, it's Jennifer, the Fit Stitcher, and I'm here with Sophie. We are back after way too long of a break. Last time I was here, it was before Thanksgiving, and man, time just got away from me like crazy. But we are back, and we have lots to share. I'm gonna let Sophie go lay down and bark at people. All right, baby, go ahead. There's a good girl. All right, so since I was here last, fix my necklace, I had LASIK um, two days before Thanksgiving. No more glasses. I do have to wear reading glasses to read or to do any stitching, and I have my little, I wear them, but I don't want to, you know, wear them right now. But, um, I am so thrilled. I love it. I can see far away now. And I do use glasses for my stitching for just normal book reading or just normal cross stitching like 28 count, 32 count. I wear my 2.0s. And then to do um, small stuff over one or, you know, 40 over two, I use a plus three so that it's just bigger magnification. And I'm loving it. I was a little bit worried that, um, that after getting, you know, I knew I'd have to wear readers and I was a little worried that I wouldn't about if it would bother me cross stitching with the readers on. Not a problem at all. It is so much better. I don't, my eyes don't get all tired and squinty. I was having a lot of problems stitching and it was really bothering me. And I was considering going to my eye doctor and, um, asking him to try to do weird prescriptions and stuff. And then I'm at the store putting on glasses and I look terrible in glasses. I just, I don't like how I look. I wore contacts until I was around 40, 41. And then my eyes started changing as they do when you get that age. And um, I started needing bifocals too. So I did the progressives. And I, I just, I do not like how I look with glasses on. And I'll tell you, since I got the glasses off, I just, I feel so much better. I feel like I look better. I'm happier. When you're happy, you feel better and you get more done. So, <laughs> been thrilled with that. Um, then over, so for Christmas, I have a couple things to show that were like Christmas items. And I finished, ooh. I finished the um, Farmhouse Christmas series. I have these two, or my last two that I did, and I still need to fully finish these. I have gotten, I have been doing, I did the flat fold, the Vonna Pfeiffer Method Twisted Stitcher, and she has a tutorial on how to do these flat folds, and I followed her tutorial and it is awesome. So this is the first one I did. I tried the first one and I was like, oh, regular glue takes so long and let's try a glue gun. And the glue gun does work, but you can see, see how there's some gaps and stuff here. The problem is, is the, the glue gun, the glue, it dries too fast. So, and it, and it, as you know, with glue guns, it leaves a big chunk of glue. So here's one that I have. I don't have the, see, when you put all the little doodads on, it really brings it to life and makes it really cute. So I don't have all the doodads on this one yet, but from then on out, I did with the Eileen's Tacky Glue, like she says, and look at how much better that is. So you can see, can see the difference. So much better to use the Eileen's Tacky Glue. So that is what I did on the rest of them. It's, you know, nobody's going to notice unless they're looking at it with a microscope, which they're not going to. And so I have, I have these two that need to get, I have all of these ready. I just need to put them on this, and then I need to do the fancy stuff around. And I've got to get down to the basement and do that. I've just been so busy and doing all this other cross stitch <laughs> ever, ever since my eyes got better and I was able to really start stitching again oh my gosh I've been on fire my needles have been on fire I've been having a blast I've been making all the things it's been good times so that's I love these they are so cute that's pretty that's a farmhouse Christmas okay 
So then Christmas happened and my mom for Christmas, she got me all of the, um, of the cottage needle, the country cottage needleworks, the cottage of the month. This is February. Um, the January one's in here somewhere. I don't know where it's at. But I finished January. I finished this in like a couple of days. And I did change the blue. It's supposed to be turquoise. I, you know, I don't have, uh, yeah, I've got that turquoise right back there behind me. But most, I just didn't want the turquoise. I wanted it to be, and I've got this other cross stitch, the Paula Vaughan. And um, it is, has more of these, the 930, 931, 932 blues in them. So that's what I changed it, the DMC, I think 931 and 932. I didn't use 930, it's too dark. And then to, so that my um, snowflakes showed up, I used the B5200. Then another thing I did, and I kind of wish I had done this on the farmhouse Christmas. My mother also got me all of the linen that goes with with these. See, she got me, she got me all the threads, all the linen. I've got the whole set. Like, I got super spoiled. And oh my gosh, I think I got, because I always hashtag it like Country Cottage Needleworks, and I think I was featured on one of the top, the posts, like when you follow a hashtag, then sometimes you see some of the things that have been used. And because I got a ton of likes on Instagram. Thank you, everybody. But um, I must have been. So anyway, so I don't know if you can see on this linen. It's the 28 count lamb's wool linen. If you look up close, see how the one that's unwashed, which is this one with the label, see how the weave and stuff is, is really loose? The weave is all loose and uneven and on the farmhouse Christmas, I did not like stitching on that stuff. I, it was a pain, I did not enjoy it. So what I did, this is the same linen. Let me switch it around. I'm all backwards. See how much tighter the weave is? What I did is I took the linen and I got a bowl. And in the microwave, I heated up some water to boiling. It's about, it was a Pyrex, a small, medium-ish Pyrex, like, four minutes or so and it was boiling in the microwave. I put it in the bowl, <coughs> excuse me, and I put in some wool light, just a little bit of wool light, and I washed it with some tongs. Wash, 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 wash. And then I um, rinsed it out really well with cold water and then I ironed it dry. And what it did is it, it tightened up, this is the washed one, it tightened up the weave it did shrink it a smidge, not a ton. It did shrink it a little bit, but I am so much happier stitching on it. I just did not. I wish I had done that with my other ones. You can see the difference. And it makes it, I, you know, I don't care. The whole, is it floppy, is it not floppy? That doesn't bother me. What I, I like is how it, is covered with your needle and thread and I just feel that washing it and fluffing it up made a huge huge difference for me so all the other ones before I start on them I will wash I will boil this I didn't dye it or anything like that I just put it in a bowl with some boiling water and a little bit of wool light, swooshed it up and washed it, rinsed it, ironed it flat. Very, very, very happy with it. So that is what I'm going to do. And every month I will do one of these. And I've got all the fancy floss that needed. So I'm pretty much, it's going to go on a case-by-case -case basis, but I'm pretty much going to stick with the colors that is required. But um, if here or there, if I feel like, Maybe I don't like that color, I'll switch it. And I will let you know when I do so. But that is that one. Then, so that's what I got for my Christmas present. It was amazing. 
And then we had my, oh, oh no. What on earth? My computer just decided to go to sleep on me. Interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. So that was Christmas. And then also during Christmas, this is what, this is a little quilted table runner I made. And it's going to be the cover on the radiator that these little things are going to sit on. Ta-da! And as you can see, the fabric is the same. <laughs> I did that on purpose because I was like, hey, I liked it. And it went all together and stuff. So these are just some little diamonds that I um, English paper pieced together. Where's the one that I quilted? And I've started hand quilting it here. I don't know if you can see. Just a quarter inch in on the stars and then I'll probably go around the star. I'm not sure if I'm going to go in the ditch or a quarter inch out. Um, I'll try one and if I don't like it I'll take it out and do it the other way. But I still need to finish hand quilting it and stuff so it'll be used next year. But I made this. It's very cute. I really like it. So that's my quilting. So then also my birthday happened. My birthday is on January 1st. I'm a New Year's baby and I turned 47 this year. Yay! And we usually, you know, we celebrate at midnight and we do some cake and some champagne and Sophie sits with me and I'll stick a couple of pictures in here of us being cute on midnight at New Year's. And then, so then we, uh, I was in Massachusetts with some friends of mine and we did this little retreat thing and, um, we went to a stitch shop. We went to the world. Oh, what's it called? What is the name of the a world in stitches? Littleton, Massachusetts. I'll have to look up the stitch shop. Anyway, we went there and I saw this really cute Granny Square Daily Temperature Stitch Along by Carolyn Manning Designs. And I thought, that's really cute. That's that's something I could do every day. You know, get just get a it's just a few little stitches every day. I was like, that sounds fun. So I bought it and I am doing it. And if you follow me on Instagram or on Facebook, you have seen every day in my stories at the top where the little circle is, there's the stories. I have been posting a picture of my daily progress with what the temperature is. So here we are, and January 1st started up here, and then what I'm doing is as I'm going along, I'm going this day, that day, this day, that day. I'm going along like that, because whenever I plotted it out to go straight across, then the months, like when you'd start February or another month, it would, they didn't like really stay together solidly. This way, all of January will be together mostly in a kind of a block. So each month will be more of a, more of a block. And um, I thought I would like that better. And I'm stitching it on this 27 count uh, red stripe ticking banding. Animals are distracting me. <laughs> this is 27 count red stripe ticking banding that I got from 123 Stitch. And I just have rolled it up at the bottom. I got a really long piece, 36 yard, 36 inches a yard. Because I'm not sure of how I'm going to do the finishing at the top. I know I'm going to put up here that it's like the daily temperature in Hamden, Connecticut, the high, the daily high temperature in Hamden, Connecticut for the year of 2020. And I think at the bottom, I am probably going to put the the legend of what each square, what it represents. So it goes in five degree increments. So it's like 55 to 59, 60 to 64. And I think I will put the legend down here too, because I did change a few of the colors to kind of go be more what I want. But some of the light colors, like there's a light green in there and a really light blue, because I'm doing it one over one and it's so tiny, 
it's not showing the difference in color. So if I enjoy doing this, and if I decide to continue it into next year, I am going to fiddle with the colors a little to make sure that they show up properly to, so you can see you know what's going on in the stitching. Some of them, they look like the same color. I know it's a different color, but you know, if you didn't know, it looks like the same color. So I'm posting that every day on Instagram and maybe once a week or definitely every month, I will put in my Instagram feed, I will put a, um, like a, a snapshot of the month. So that is happening every day and I'm loving doing it. It takes like five minutes, you know, it's really fast. And because the temperatures are staying kind of consistent, you get to know it's like, oh, it's that block again. So it's this color, this color, this color becomes real easy. <laughs> I have them all kitted up in a little box so they're all together and I'm ready to go. Then what else? Also for my month things, okay, I have I have two projects in here. I have the cottages, <coughs> excuse me, and then I have these flowers. And the flower ones are Let's see, Unano in Fiore, which I believe this is Italian. It's from Cuore e Batticore. It's Italian. It's the month in flowers. And they were super cute. I saw them at the stitching shop in Massachusetts, and I was like, oh my goodness, those are so cute. So I wanted to do those. And I am doing them on even weave. This my mom had gotten me also some lamb's wool 28 count even weave and um, I I did make it a little bit darker. I tea and coffee stained it but it's not I didn't really super bake it and I didn't want a whole lot of coloring. I just darkened it up a little made it a little funky. But this is January and I I did change the color some. I'm kind of using whatever I have of fancy floss that's on hand. So, because you know, it's they're tiny and I wanna use my fun fancy floss. I spent money on it, I wanna use it. So I don't know what the colors are, but I changed them a little bit. And this is my January little snowdrop. It's so cute and dainty, oh. And I'm going to probably make these into some little pillows and I'm probably going to around the outside put a little border of quilt fabric so that I don't lose this this detail in the corners when you sew it into a pillow and you poof it. I don't want to lose the detail. So I'm going to stitch a little bit of fabric around here and then turn it into a pillow. And I'm doing one of these every month and it's so sweet and cute and I have all of them ready to go. I have my little tiny hoopy because this because stitching over one is it's a little bit more difficult. I usually stitch in hand, but um, over one on even weave you really want to kind of spread. You want to stretch your fabric out better so that you can find the holes and stuff easier. So I have these little hoopies that I found on Amazon, and I wrapped them with the twill tape, and I do not overlap my tool tape when I wrap it because I had done one before and I had overlapped it and it made it to where first of all this wouldn't fit on and then also because it's overlapped it's all bumpy it doesn't hold tension well so what you have to do is you have to wrap it and you have to edge it up next to each other like that and if it if it overlaps on the inside that's okay because you're not trying to put any fabric there or tension there. And then there's my stitching. I stitched it really well. It's a bit of a mess. Let's see. There it is. And then on the then when I cut it off here, I put some fray check on so that that didn't fray. I put fray check on there so it didn't all unravel and and like, you know, undo all the work I did. So that is what I have going on. Oops, for that one. 
and these are all living, these two are going together in one container, one bag. I'm going out to Colorado for a month in February. I'm going to go visit my parents. I like to get out of, it gets really dark and dreary a lot of times out here in New England in, in March, February, February, March. And I have that seasonal affective disorder. I tend to get depressed and stuff. So I'm getting out of town. I'm, I'm, me and Sophie, we are going to Colorado where it's sunny. It may not be super warm, but it's sunshiny. And because it's sunshiny, it is warmer. Even though it's colder, it's warmer. It's, it's different. So we are going to Colorado. I've got it all packed up and ready to go. Yeah. Then I also got the 12 Berries of Christmas by Erica Michaels. I have been looking at these berries for a while and I have been just thinking they are so cute. And last time I was at my I think it was in December. I was at um, Thistle Needleworks up in um, Weathersfield. <laughs> I know where this place is. In Weathersfield, Connecticut. And they were all just there. I was like, they just got it in my head. I had just seen somebody's Instagram post that they had finished them. And I was like, oh, those are so cute. And I looked and they had these four. And I'm like, well, that's just meant to be. I'm getting them. So I got them. <clears throat> I also got all of the, for the first set, I might, I'll probably have to buy more floss, but for these three, I have all the required fancy floss, I've got all the fabric ready, I've got it cut to size, I top coffee and tea stained it because it was the, um, I think I bought, I bought a 40 count. And they wanted for the for the thing they wanted the um they wanted this mocha. They wanted cocoa. They wanted a Weeks Dye Works cocoa linen. One two three stitch was out, and it was also way more expensive than what I wanted to spend. So I got, uh, I think Wil Wilchelt, um. 40 count and it was it's a lighter color I don't remember what color I got maybe lamb's wool and I tea coffee stained this and again I didn't want a lot of the um I didn't want a lot of the um real harsh staining and spots I just wanted it darker with maybe a little bit of grunge here and there but this is the first one and the lighting today is not happening because it's sun's going down here's partridge in a pear tree I just finished it this morning, so I have not taken out my grid lines yet, my, <clears throat> my um, X and Y. I always put in an X and a Y, and that way I can always see if I'm on track or I can catch a mistake a lot faster, so I don't, if I, you know, I don't, I don't end up being like having to frog half the thing because I was off. I always put in my X and Y and then I take them out after. You can probably barely see them. They're light pink. There it is. So I finished that. Ta-da! Super cute. So I'm going to do one of these a month. And I figured if I do one of these a month also, these little things take like two or three days, you know? And since I've gotten my eyes fixed, I can just stitch like crazy. Again, like I did way back in the day before I had, you know, the eye problem. So um, that's another one a month that I'm going to be doing. And so by next Christmas, I will be ready to sew them all up and get them ready to go. Then I also, with, um, you know, you've been seeing on Instagram and stuff, a lot of the, the wildfires, people are doing a lot of um, fundraisers. So one that I really liked and got is the Jane Marshall... 1857 from Hands Across the Sea Samplers. Let's see if you can get a really good shot of that. And she is an Australian girl. And she, it's a little, it's a small little sampler. And I started, I bought it and started it right away. And, you know, again, I do my X and my Y grid lines. And I kind of start in the middle-ish and I'll work my way up. And then I'll work my way down. 
And that way, you know, it's just some piece of scrap linen I had. It's 40 count. I'm doing it over two. I did coffee, tea, stain, dye this one. And you can see a little bit of discoloration because I wanted there to be discoloration on this one. So you can see a little bit of staining because it's supposed to look old. So right here, I started, I did not have the correct color. I'm doing it in DMCs and I did not have on hand, I have a ton of DMC, I didn't have that color. So I was fooling around and I tried, this is um, 758 and it wanted 152. And I tried 758 and it's, it's so light. I was like, oh, I just don't think that's the right color. So I did go out and get the 152. It's going to be much better. I don't have it on hand. It's over in my stitching spot. It is, it is pinker. It's darker. It's going to look much better. So I'm very pleased. And now that I have finished this one, I am getting back to this. Very excited. So I'm getting back to that one. Um, oh, another. I have a lot of projects that I'm doing every month right now. But they're so fun. So this is the um, Tiny Modernist, and it's the Words to Live By series. I don't know where the big picture is, but I'm not doing it in a big one anyway. So I don't know if I showed you today is a good day to have a good day. So that one's all finished. This is the main thing. Let's see. Here it is. So the way they have it is they have it, this big middle part, and then all the little ones around. And you can see the little scrolly action there. Well, I want to do mine individually, and I'm not going to do that middle section. But I did take their scroll work, and I worked it so that I could have the scroll work frame that every day. So I just reworked what they did, they had and did a little scrolling and I'm using all the colors that they call for and then I finished when you love what you have you have everything you need and that's very cute it's close to Valentine's and that one is finished and I do know what I'm gonna do for fully finishing this but um I will get that done and show next time so uh, there we go so I've got two of those done they're very cute, 14 count, black Ada. Lots of fun, super quick to finish. So I'm also doing one of those every month. So I have lots of projects that I'm doing one every month. Um, what else? That's kind of what's going on stitching wise. I have other things that are, you know, that I've started and I just haven't worked on. So I'm not gonna show them again because we could be here all day. <laughs> so. Oh, um, one thing that we ha I am doing is um, with Beachbody, we have started the new bar blend um, program. And it's, I was a dancer since I was five, and I've done ballet, I've done jazz, tap, I was cheerleader, I was on dance teams, um, danced in university, I took ballet in university. Excuse me. But, um, loved it so now they've got Elise Jones doing her bar blend and I am so loving it I I love the structure that comes with ballet I, I love the I don't really like um exercise programs where you, you go real fast but you're just kind of flailing around and you're not I mean you're supposed to be paying attention to form but when you're going that fast it's kind of hard I, I love the structure of dance and your body goes here and this leg goes there and you position it just so and you lift and I really, 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 really love it and you center, a lot of it's being centered. So, and it just makes you feel more centered in yourself and in your brain. It, it's like it helps organize your brain and it centers you and it's really fun. And, um, oh, let me... Let me go grab something real quick. Okay. All right, I forgot. She's got these great, these daily motivation cards. And it says, I am, and I've been forgetting about my cards. I need to start getting out a card every day. 
and showing it on Instagram. And so here's the cards. And it has nice little messages on. So like it has, I am adaptable. Oh. <laughs> I am irresistible. So when I rise into my confidence, I attract positive people and opportunities. Yeah. Oh dear. Excuse me one moment. That was the hubby calling. <laughs> so, but yeah, she's got these cute cards. You're supposed to pull one every day. And she pulls one on the program. And she's, you know, every day. The workouts are, they call them real time. Which means you are not getting a workout where you watch the same video every day. Where they say the same thing every day. And you just become comatose because it's boring hearing people say the same thing every single time. So every day it is a new workout. She says different things every single day for 60 days. It is the best. I, I love the way they do that now. It is just amazing. With it also comes this um, guide to nutrition. And what it is is it's a book that has, let's see, it's got recipes for things to make, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. And when you buy a challenge pack for Bar Blend, this comes with it. You get the cards, you get the booklet here for your nutrition and recipes. There's also um, tips for success, tips for Shakeology, different Shakeology recipes that you can mix it up and make your Shakeology have a different flavor than just, you know, the ordinary. What I like to do for my Shakeology is I, I fill my cup up halfway and then I put in my Shakeology, I put in frozen strawberries, some sort of green items, spinach or something, um, some dry oatmeal, and then I use the Collagen Boost which makes my skin look fabulous and my hair. So here's supplements. Let's see. No, they don't have a picture of the collagen boost in here. So I put those things in my Shakeology and that's how I drink mine. It's like my superpower breakfast. Here we have Energize. Drink this like 15 minutes before your workout and I'll tell you what, it helps. Totally. I used to work out and I, at, you know, at a gym and I had a private, a personal trainer and stuff and it just didn't work. And I was super, super sore all the time. This is recover. This is what you have right after your workout. It's like a, it's like drinking chocolate milk. It's amazing. And you have like a piece of fruit with it. Like I have a pear and you don't get as sore. I, I was working out maybe 20, 30 minutes with a private, you know, personal trainer two or three times a week, nothing was happening for my body at all, except for I was crippled every single time I came home. For days, I would be crippled. Now, I'm working out every single day. I'm having my energize. I'm having my recover. I feel fantastic, and I lost 12 pounds last year, and I am getting my ballet body, body back this year. I'm still a little bit chubby. I totally flaked over Christmas, uh, really since September. I got really sick after... Um, my husband's mother and aunt visited. I got really sick for like a month. And then when I had my eye surgery, I couldn't exercise for a week. And then Christmas happened and I was just like, eh, whatever. I ate all the cookies. I ate all the candy. I ate all the ice cream. And I was really surprised. I only gained two and a half pounds. I was like, wow. I, I really thought that I had put on almost 10 pounds and I didn't. I was really shocked. I just poofed out a lot. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um... Those are some of the supplements that happen. Here is Elise showing Bar Blend. Her story is very interesting. When she, right before she started this program, she and her husband had been trying to have children. And she's 41 now. So, just, you know, you're at, that's the age where women, if they haven't had any naturally, a lot, so they tried IVF. And um, 
They did IVF. She also got her body. She was she was a professional Broadway dancer and singer. And that career ended from a, a voice injury that she had when she was in her late 20s. And then she became a yoga, and she's done some of the Beachbody yoga programs. And she is a Beachbody trainer, but she was into yoga and all that kind of stuff. So she had a very fit, you know, super fit body. And when she was trying to get pregnant, she changed the way she was eating. She gained weight. She gained body fat because she wanted to prepare her body to have children. And, um, and she says all of this in her stories online. You can go follow her at Elise Joan Fitness on Instagram and she, or you can go to the Beachbody website and I think they have her story on there also. But she says that, um, she did IVF and they got all these embryos and stuff and then they all died and she was just crushed and she said she got very depressed she was in bed for weeks crying and just really upset. And then her husband's like, all right, come on. We're going to get up and you're going to take a shower today. And you're going to eat dinner today. And she started feeling better. And then right when she herself decided, okay, I've mourned. This is enough. I, I need to figure out what's next now because it's not happening this way for us. <clears throat> That's when Beachbody called and offered and said, hey, we want you to design a bar program for like a ballet bar program for because it's so popular now. They're like, we want a ballet bar program. She was like, yes, I need this so bad. So that is and this is and there is a picture. I will try to remember to put it in here that she posted herself of her before and her her body then when she was getting ready to have children and then the shape she got into making the program and she kind of phenomenal shape you know and so she also that's why she included these cards because not only for her was this a journey for getting into you know getting her body fit and stuff again the way she she wants it it's you know what you want for your body and what your body can do it was also an emotional journey for her and a a spiritual well-being and a spiritual health for her and she wanted to share that as well in the program so that it's not only just fitness when you're following this program she also talks a lot about your mental health and your spiritual health and how you feel inside and how to build your body also from the inside with from your emotions and feelings and it's really amazing and dancing does just make you feel better you just and it's not like a whole lot of dancing. You're not dancing around. A lot of these, it's totally no impact. You do not have to leave the floor. I mean, the advanced movements, there are some jump, there's some jumping, but you don't have to jump if you don't want to or if you can't. You know, sometimes I can't jump because my feet, they're getting much better. They're getting stronger. I'm, I'm getting able to jump. But um, you don't have to do any jumping. You don't have to ever leave the floor. You get a fantastic workout and you just feel more centered. It's, it's really great. I am loving it. If you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, I'm posting, I work out five days a week, maybe six, and that's what you're supposed to do. And then two days are um, rest days. And on those days, she's like, go for a walk, do some yoga, you know, something like that, but not the hardcore workout. And, um, so if you follow me on my Instagram stories or Facebook, you'll see me posting my post every day of my dance, with my dance body and my moves. And, oh, I'm just really loving it. It is it's making me very happy again. So uh, if you want to join me and have fun, my group, my team, we are starting a, call it a challenge group or an accountability group. What it is is... Um, you have to have bought the challenge pack and signed up in order to get the program. And we all, it, it's an app. You get an app on your phone from Beachbody and it's all of us in the little group and we're all friends. Or if you don't know anybody, you just introduce yourself and, hey, I'm so-and-so, this is what I do. And every day you post a picture of you exercising or after your workout. You know, if you don't feel comfortable, you can just do a little headshot like, hey, I worked out, it was so hard. Ah. But, um, and then everybody just, cheers each other on, we share recipes, we share tips and tricks. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Um, when I first started, 
a year ago, October, I did a, um, I did a challenge group that they were running for 80 day obsession and I did the whole program and, oh my gosh, I loved it so much. And I met lots of people. And then whenever I went to summit in July, I met all of those people for real in real life. So all of my internet friends became my real life friends and, um, yeah, it's great. A lot of them live in Colorado Springs. So when I go out to see my parents in February, I will get to see some of them again and meet some that didn't come to Summit that I haven't met yet, but yet I know online, but I want to meet in real life. So I'm excited for that. So, um, that is what the, um, bar blend is all about. It even has a little calendar on the back, which I'm kind of following. What I did is I did the first week because I haven't worked out consistently for three months. Um, I did the first week and I was like dying. Oh my gosh. So I have decided to repeat the first week. So I'm doing the first week again and I can really tell the difference. I, you know, you can, you can really tell the difference. I feel better with my, uh, cardio, my breathing, feeling stronger, my body's feeling more limber and yeah, so I'm loving it. It's a blast. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook and you can see me doing it. Lots of fun. Uh, I'm Jennifer Copaz Rose. Jennifer has one N. Copaz, K-O-P-A-S-Z, Rose, R-O-O-S. And um, earlier this week, I had filmed a few clips while I was doing the workout. And so I'm going to put those in here so you can kind of see what's going on. And that is all I have to say today. So I'm going to share my bar blend with you. Follow me again, Instagram and Facebook, and you can watch me doing my bar blend. Join in. If you don't feel comfortable trying to write some sort of a message or something to, some, to me, just put a little um, emoji down in the comment box, and then I will know to get in touch with you for, with some more information. So, um... It's fun. And you can join anytime. You don't have to like, cause we're starting on Monday, but if you don't want to do it for like a month, then we'll start in a month. Um, the challenge packs are on sale through the end of the month. So if maybe you don't want to start it till February or something, but you want to get the $20 off, then you order it now and just start later, you know, but, um, it's fun. It's a blast. I really, I'm liking this one. I think you can tell how excited I am. <laughs> so, uh, all right, that's all there is. And I will show you my workout and I will see you next time. I will not make it so long because this was too long. Next time will probably be from Colorado. My mom stitches too. So, and I'm trying to get my niece and nephew stitching. So we'll see. We'll see how I, how I do with that. Maybe I'll tape them learning how. All right. See you later. Bye. For two, but remember, the up is that halfway point. Let's make it tempo. Down and up. Ooh, I am sweating. I am feeling that burn. Can you give me four more here? It's down and up. Keep your level. I give you lots of options so that no matter your fitness level, you feel welcome, encouraged, and challenged. Keep them safe. Now one more level, you can add that jump in and out, right? So if you love adding that high energy, high impact, you'll stay here with so many. Ready, just practice standing on one foot. And guess what? It's highly likely I'm gonna fall down at some point in the next 60 days, maybe even today. You guys have a better side? That's okay, right? We're gonna bring it all into balance over the next 60 days. And Jean, are you still low in the hips? I hope so, because that's that bar blend bird. Let's meet it. Staying deep in the legs and in the core. I want you to continue. Alessandra, you the ceiling, and it's external hip mobility. Engage the core. Good, let's take it tempo. Lift and lift, lift and lift. You got it, three. So, bar blend. I am famous for my core work. And we don't have to be in sit-ups to get core. We're getting the core right here. So many, right? Day one, she loves it. I want you to breathe. Sometimes you work so hard that your sweat rolls into your eyeballs. Yes, and all this without a jump. 
Armstrong, if you can get this much space today, drop on, we'll still up level you. But if you're not doing your thing, you can see on McKenna here. The low back is long. So show me an arch in the back, McKenna. Ooh, I don't even like to demonstrate it. So she's gonna keep her, you're feeling this. This is straight up glute max work, right? We also got the left. Can you keep the same range of motion? but bring it to tempo for a few. It's down and up. Plie and reach. So we are getting stability. One side of your booty is feeling a little more lifted. Right? We're gonna match it up. The first, excellent. And what I love about this particular move, right? We're finding mobility. We're finding, where are you feeling it? I feel it outer hips. I feel it core. I feel it standing leg. Plie. So I'm gonna get you used to our French ballet terms. Right, and be in our hashtag. Show me your attitude, and be sure you tag us when you do. I love to see everyone's attitude come out. It's an attitude, and I want you to feel that beautiful curvature in the spine. This is our C curve position, our high C curve, a Pilates crisscross. And what I really love is if you checked out Alessandra. She's still got that nice safety in her spine. I do you through this 60-day program where you elevate your spirit your heart and your mind. A little familiar, keep it really classy here at Bar Blend. A little full body sweep, sweep those arms wide. Now shift your weight into that front foot and just try a balance. You're ready. The balance will come with time. Bring it back, let's circle it around. And one more balance. Guess what? Falling down, it's part of the program. Come through center. I always think that if you're okay, I've learned over time that the fear of falling is much, much scarier than the fall itself. So go there, find your edge, explore the balance, lift up, up today at the bar, and a reminder to revere yourself, which is just French for- Okay, so that is day one of week one of Bar Blend. I have done the whole first week last week and um, I've decided to start the week again and see how I do. And I am much improved on the first exercise day than I was the first time. <laughs> I, can, I can definitely tell the difference. Um, my strength is better, my cardio breathing is better. So um, yeah, it's great, I'm loving it. I'm loving getting back into all my ballet poses and feeling it again. And I feel, I stand taller, I just feel better. So. I hope you join me doing Bar Blend. You can always um, send me a direct message on Instagram or go to my Facebook page, Jennifer Copaz Rose. Or yeah, just give me a give me a message and we'll do this thing. Bye.